Alright, here we are everybody. Welcome to another Project Healing Water Spectacular Special. We are tying ourselves a, uh, a dirty hippie. What's going on? How you doing, Brad? Thanks for tuning in. So Brad says, what's up? I think I have some dirty hippies in my fly box. Well, how about it? What's going on, everybody? We'll give it a couple more moments. Uh, so what we're tying today is a variation, a slight variation as close as I'm going to get to it for a, uh, a fly called the Dirty Hippie. Now, one of the things about the Dirty Hippie is uh, when we tie it out at the St. Cloud VA, when we're tying it out at the, at the hospital at Project Healing Waters, one of the things that... I miss out on when I'm teaching the woolly buggers is I don't get to sit in and uh, tie all the different patterns with everybody. Uh, so it's been quite some time since I have uh, actually tied a dirty hippie. And uh, yeah, we watched a couple of YouTube videos on and I looked at uh, a couple that I've tied in the past. So let's uh go ahead and get at it we got josh anderson in the chat we got uh we got frank Enrico. what's going on anchorage alaska project healing waters how about that all right well let's just go ahead and let's see here my camera is not working where to go all right we're gonna Cut to that in one second. For whatever reason, so I'm working with a, a different camera setup, and when I got to it, it, turned out all the cameras were missing. Not only were they missing, but now as I pull them up, uh, they're upside down, so I need to rotate 180 degrees and expand that width. Whoa, that's a little bit too big. Sorry for the delay, folks. We, it's been a, uh, it's been interesting. There we go. Let's flip that over. So there's my variation of the dirty hippie. Um, that's what I tied up earlier today. I, like I said, I've I've had to practice a couple of times. This isn't, it's not a pattern that I've tied very often. <clears throat> so. Anyways, I have this tied on, you know what, I'm just going to go through everything as we go through everything. We have Dale Sanders representing from Project Healing Waters, Iowa. What's going on? Alright, so this is, like I said, it's a variation of a pattern called the Dirty Hippie. As best as I can relax and, um, yeah. gonna be us right there all right so we're gonna just pull our sample away and we're gonna go over the materials as we tie it because I'm gonna re forget to go over things if I don't all right so here we are mid-April April where are we at 15th most uh, used to be tax day Guess what? Yours truly has a birthday coming up um, here this Friday on the 17th. All right, so check us out. We have some Moonlit ML057. These are 1X strong, 3X long uh, shank hooks. These are size 2s. In comparison to uh, what we've been tying with before, uh, the must add 3366s. This is what we're going to see for a difference. All right, the, the hook points are pretty close, but this is, I'll match up the eyes right there. So what we're ending up with is a little bit more, a little more length in our hook um, than that 3366. So 
This will be all right, all right. All right, so what we need to do before we go too far is go ahead and find ourselves an appropriate sized cone head. And this, I what do I have here? It's a large, here we go, large brass cone head. In the color of copper. How about that? I don't have to do my super fancy trick to get that to hold on, but I hope. All right, put that cone head forward. All right, so for our thread, now when we're tying our flies, it's all about weight and balance and things like that there. So our cone head is actually, it's not gonna be in the front, uh, right behind the eye of the hook. We're actually gonna push it back. If it was a clouser minnow, where would this be? It would be at that one third, two third point. So that's going to be my spot where I'm going to start my thread right at that one third, two third point. Maybe a little bit further forward. Yeah, right there. And that's going to be my visual indicator. We'll go ahead and just trim off our, our tag end. Um, on my thread here, it feels like it could be like a maybe a 140 denier. Uh, wax thread it's not super thick I'm not using a 210 or anything like that otherwise I'd get a uh, build up on the bulk way too quick so we're gonna just kind of let that uh, we're gonna let that hang out there do its thing so um, yeah we need to add a little bit of weight and for my weight I am going to use a two hundredths lead free round wire two hundredths round wire lead free how about that and we're gonna start right about here right at the uh, tip of the hook and we're just gonna go ahead and get that started a couple of wraps and I like to ro always like wrapping my my weighted wires uh, counterclockwise or anti-clockwise counter wraps Just how I roll. We'll just do nice tight wraps all the way to this point right here where our thread has started. All right. Well, this helicopter, there we go. If it doesn't helicopter off super easy, you know what we got on standby? Ba Boom. All right. We'll set that off to the side now. To verify. All right, so looking at our portions, I think we're doing pretty good. How are we doing out there? Let's see. Check the chat. I, I, I forget to check the chat from time to time. Audio coming through nice and clear. Uh, music sounding all right. Not too loud, not too proud. Having a wonderful day. A little bit of anxiety. Um, some things happening in my hometown back in Lansing, Michigan. Um, not anything I personally agree with, but that's not what we're here for today. We are here today to tie supplies. So I just threw a little bit of a uh, little bit of thread wraps in there just to kind of help start locking that in. And wouldn't you know, I'm just going to come in with a little dab of the secret sauce. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, some Sally Hansen's secret sauce, the invisible insurance policy brought to you by Sally Hansen, hard as nails, keeping you safe and secure for years to come. All right, we're just going to just go right off the tip of the brush. Just a little dab of glue is just enough to kind of start to soak in between the bits of that lead free wire because this is all going to hang out behind back here. And we'll work our thread into that lead-free wire, into that glue. It's beautiful. Fantastic. But don't forget, we're going to add some extra wraps, capping that off on that back end, giving ourselves a nice little, nice little taper off the end of that back end. All right, so check this out. This is what we're going to do. 
wrap our thread forward one last time. Oh, that's sharp. And we'll just clean off any excess that's oozing out at this time. All right, where did I set that? Let's see here. All right, so like I said, uh, this is a variation. So, you know, you, you get through the books, you find yourself, you know, if you can find if you can find a picture of a dirty, a proper dirty hippie in a published book, take a picture of it and uh, and send it to me, um, either on, uh, I don't know, YouTube or Instagram or email me or something. Uh, I'd be curious to see what, you know, an actual bona fide published book recipe uh, so check this out. We got some flashaboo six niner niner six, or was that nine six six nine? No, nope, it's six nine nine six. And with our flashaboo, we don't need too much yet. We're gonna just take I don't know. Let's count it out: two, four, six, seven strands. Ooh, that's kind of. Kind of cheeky. Let's take our seven strands. And we're gonna tie that in right up front. Watch this. Lift and lower. Set it right on top. I'm just gonna take a couple loose wraps back. Cinch that down and bazingo. Wrap back all the way down our little ramp onto the bear shank of that hook. And now we'll take some tight thread wraps all the way in front of that lead wire, lead free wire. Steve Trybowski, good evening. Good evening. Thanks for tuning in. All right. So we're working on our dirty hippie variation. And what do you think this is going to do? If you thought we were going to leave it back here, you were wrong. What we're going to do instead is we're going to palmer it forward. We're just going to take touching wraps. Now this is an added step. This is the above and beyond. This is going the extra distance, tying the fly, extra special for your finny friend, Mr. Bass, in my case. And, you know, I honestly, sometimes, I really don't mind going the extra step for the fish. I know that deep inside, there'll be a little bit of red bedazzle for this, uh, whoever, whoever has the pleasure, for whatever fish has the honest to God pleasure of hitting this fly. All right, let's go ahead and just trim that off now we have these little bits um, after some discussion uh, with my uh, better half we've decided that yes indeed we are going to keep these in kind of went back and forth I wasn't a hundred percent but mama says yes so as it is all right so I'm just kind of a little oh, okay well hopefully we won't lose these as I just drop them on the bench. Let's grab a spare hackle plier. Let's go with these. Here we go. A little bit of hackle plier action just to hang on to our uh, little spare bits of flash. So saving you from beta. All right, good enough. All right, let's find our bone dry. We'll take our resin and we're going to, I guess you could do it with uh, Sally Hansen's, but you'd have to wait forever for it to dry. So we're just gonna take some bone dry and because we're gonna just take a couple big, big blops of it, we spread it around. We're going to go right with the brush. Don't tell no one. But that's what we're doing. All right, we'll take our friend Mr. Bodkin and redistribute. 
With this bone dry thin, it really likes to run and move, so get it where you want it and give it a quick zap. So there we go. We have successfully added some red sparkly weight behind our fancy cone head, which theoretically ain't nobody going to see. But it's the heart of the fly, I think. Perfect. All right. So that worked out fairly well. I'm going to kind of make sure this cone will not slip back there. Just a few more wraps of thread. Hold that up just a little bit. Good. Okay, so on the video of the other uh, YouTuber out there that uh, tied this, this particular fly, and other, I'm sure other people are totally cool with just bopping your thread over, but to me it just seems like a vulnerable position. I'm sure it steady eddies it, but watch what I'm going to do. I know. I'm just going to do whip finish here. And I'm just going to move my thread all the way in front of it. What do you think of that? All right, take our thread right to, right to it. All right, so now we got to find ourselves some more flash. Uh, let's go ahead and I'm going to start with my um, tan. I don't have tan flash, Shibu. I have tan H2O flash. Uh, it's essentially the same as uh, some Flashaboo, just a different brand. So I'm going to take some, take some tan, and two, four, six, eight strands or so. Get out of the bag, nice and close. I'm going to give that a trim. All right. Carefully set this down because we're going to get some more flash. Sometimes if you just get a little hook and hackle plier can help you out. All right, next we're gonna get ourselves some pearl flashaboo, 6905. And same thing, we're gonna take, we're gonna take some of that. I really like adding the pearl flash of in there, and I'm just going to line, line these up with the other ones. And I'm setting these down on my bench. And last but not least, we're on the last little remnants. This is a, I call it a, a multi mix, the frog, but what it is, I actually have some that fell out of a bag a while back. It's silver and a, uh, a dark, darker colored green. So I'm just going to take a few, a few bits of that, some green and some of that gold. And we're going full length, full length on these. Let's go ahead and line them all up. Cool. All right. So we got our tan, we got our gold, we got our pearl. We're going to tie this in right at the 50-50 point. We're going to take our thread, we're going to go up and under our thread. Look at that, we can just rest that right on top. Take a wrap, and we'll just make sure our ends are nice and even. All right, so on this first bit, <coughs> if you will, I have... I'm gonna have the threat or the flash coming off, I don't know, 10, 15 degrees. Kind of up and I'm flaring it up and towards me. And I'm wrapping forward a little bit. I'm gonna take my thread, I'm gonna go back to the cone head right in front. Everything's for the rest of this fly, everything's gonna be tied in front of that cone head. I'm gonna take this flash, we're gonna fold it back 
and away from ourselves now. A couple of wraps. And just kind of make sure that we're focusing this on the upper half and we're just looking for a nice, a nice flare on that top half of that dome, on that cone. Nice and tight thread wraps. All right, we're just gonna leave that all tied in there for now. Um, and I found, moving forward, I'm just gonna take my little hair clip and I'm just gonna set that there for now. All right, how we doing? How we how we doing out there? Let's check in. We doing all right? Are we tracking questions, con comments, concerns? Are we doing awesome? Are we doing terrible? What the heck is going on? I don't know. How we doing out there? Let's take a take a quick second. All right, our next bit of material we're gonna hunt for. Um, yeah, so the video that I watched earlier, the pattern I, I was digging on uh, had some tan marabou like I said this is a variation we're gonna pick out some olive don't have tan not plumy enough not big enough doesn't quite have enough oomph if you will we got Dale's doing awesome so far so far so good all right, so we're gonna take our marabou feather. We know we're not gonna bother with that last little bit, so we're just gonna strip, strip down to the quill. This is a really nice slender, so we're gonna tie this in right here like this. All right, so here's more or less the, the top side of the feather and the bottom side, right? This is, you can tell the difference between the top and the bottom. This is the purdy side. This is a really nice full size. So let's go ahead and when I, I, when I watched it, 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 it did work and it made sense. Um, instead of tying right there at that point, we're gonna tie in a little bit into the meat, into those uh, barbs. We're just gonna tie our, our marabou feather in like so. A couple nice tight wraps. And we can go ahead and just trim off that stem bit. There we go. Down goes Frazier. Oh yeah, and, and like I said, you know, this is, this is a, uh, a variation. This is how I'm tying them here tonight. You get somebody else to show you and sit down with you they're going to tie something um either completely different or somewhat different but nonetheless it shall be different all right we are looking for our hackle pliers i don't know um I'll, i'm going to ask the audience here i'm going to ask you the viewers so even though this is not a uh, a hackle we are using our hackle pliers. So, does it warrant the hackle time bell? I don't know. Bell or no bell? What do you think? I guess we could say it's marabou time and ding the bell. I think we'll just do that. A couple of dings and it's marabou time, right? Let's do that. It's marabou time. Oh, all right. We're going to palmer our, uh, our marabou feather now. We want to keep this all splayed out and oriented. Front side, front side forward. Um, you didn't hear it because I just silently swore in my very own mind when that broke. That has not happened to me ever today. Okay, um, this afternoon in the last hour all right let's try that again 
It's a game of tension, balance of tension, right? Let's go bump my thread forward. I got focused on that thread. Namaste, Ziggy Day. Let's do this. Each time I'm going just a little bit further in, but each time I'm grabbing the center of that stem, or that quill. All right, let's coax this all back. Up and back, up and back. Come on, you. Not all of you. There we go. Take your time. It's never a race time to fly unless you're in a race time to fly. And remember, you got that nice sharp hook hanging out down there. Oh boy, oh boy, I felt it slip. I can't tell where it is. There's that stem. I can feel it in there somewhere. You know what? I'm just gonna do one more wrap. Can't even tell if I have it. Yep. Let's just secure that down. Ooh, that was intense. Oh, wow, look at that fun mess. <laughs> I like it. All right. Let's go ahead and we're going to fold all these fibers up. And we'll go ahead and release the hounds on that too. Wrap that all up. You know, I'm just going to leave that. Maybe. Yeah. I'm just going to leave that in there. I'm going to fold all these barbs up. Those marabou barbs. We're going to up back we're gonna wrap right on top of those a little bit wrapping back to that cone head and what we're looking for is we're looking for this marabou to be the top wing just like that I think that'll work alrighty so, moving on, what do we got next? We got our belly. For my belly, I am actually using a coyote belly. There's kind of the, the middle of the back. And then we'll get down here. Where have I been chomping off? There's no little chomp off. But we're looking for the lighter, lighter, whiter fibers hairs and I've discovered that I actually have to take off a, a sizable chunk because there's so much under fur on this madness that each swoop you got enough to fill the dubbing container all right so there we go here's our big our initial chunk and this is the end we're looking for right right here on that end I'm just going to pinch that bat of the tips. I'm just going to start stripping this down and out. Give it a little pinch, a little bit of a twist. Come in with my eyebrow brush and clean that out just a little bit more. Because I just, I almost need that full length of this. And clean it, clean it, clean it, clean it. All right. I'm more or less, you could hand stack those a little bit, but I think after a while it just looks a little wonky. All right, so what we're looking for here is we're going to match up our length with our marabou. And this is going to get tied in underneath. All right, match that up. Hold it underneath. We're going to do one, two, three soft wraps and just take a second and adjust. We'll just mash that and now we're covering that bottom half of that hook. And we're keeping our thread nice and tight, tight to that cone head. I didn't quite get it all the way around on 
that side. There we go. Get back there. Excellent. Let's go ahead and just trim off our excess. Probably about a snip. So there is kind of the portion of that top wing and then the bottom. I just bounced my light. That's a little bit too much. All right, here we go. Another little dab of secret sauce. A little bit of invisible insurance. Let's get that in there. That's all right. Next, 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 next. Now we're moving on to our got a next uh, bit of collar. And for our collar, I think that's a, it doesn't quite feel like foxing. It's just more of a coyote that's just kind of fluffy and brown. But anyways, this is going to be our collar. A little debris, a little burr stuck in it. All right. So with this, I'm going to go ahead and grab myself basically same as before. I'm looking for some of the longer, longer fibers on this, longer bits of hair. And let's go ahead and trim this off. fall apart in my hand it just did Eek. have to trim this real quick before I lose it all right same as before I'm just gonna take a second clean this all out Pinch and pull, pinch and pull, give it a little bit of a twist. Pinch and pull, pinch and pull, a little bit of a twist. I'm not going to spend too much time on that. There we have it. All right, let's get back to the business end, right about there. All right, so what we're going to do with this... We're going to measure this out half half the length of that marabou. And what we're going to do when we tie this in is we're going to go all the way around the shank of the hook. All the way around 360 degrees. Nice little bit of color in there. And just take some nice tight wraps. And we're going to go ahead and just trim this off. It's going to be a couple little segments. Don't cut your thread. You'll be swearing if you do. There we go. Just got to keep it, keep that eye clean. was one of my main issues before when I was tying this. It just wasn't, just was not keeping everything behind the eye. It was not an eye's length behind the eye, eye, eye. That's all the way around there. We're looking good on that. All right, next. Where are we at for next? We're going to, oh, where are we at? Let's do our angel hair. And this isn't the UV angel hair or anything like that. It's kind of a copper, copperish hue. And I pulled it out and I cut it down a little bit. What I do is I just take the fibers and I, I pull them 
and kind of restack them. And that gets everything oriented going the same direction. All right. Small little section. We're going to just tie this right on top. And we're going to, again, we're going to kind of go for that upper half, a little bit of all the way around, if you will. Yeah, we're going to make sure it just kind of goes all the way around. Nice, even distribution. Yeah, I like that. And check this out. Where's our pen? There we go. Let's go ahead and fold that all back. We're going to throw it right in front of that. Keep it in front. I'm going to build a small little head. And we'll finish this off with the whip finish. Got all this extra fluff flying around. Big fly will do that twice. Got a small thread here. Uh, for this particular, Frank asked the question, um, how many cone size? I'm guessing uh, you're intending as to what, uh, what size a cone head. And for this, it's a large, large size cone head. Mainly because that's about all I got for cone heads. A lot of different size bead heads. All right, let's take our brush. And just start to brush this out. We're starting to shape this up. I like it. All right, before I go too far, I'm going to trim my my uh, flashaboo hanging off the back end. And I'm just going to go just a little bit past. And what I like to do is I like to just kind of rake my scissors back and forth as I close them. That way they're all not cut on a super clean line. All right, last but not least, we need eyes. We need eyes. Me, I'm an eyes guy. Some people like legs, I like eyes. Some people hate legs. All right, check this out. Quarter inch, too easy, quarter inch. Let's, what is that for our metric folks? So 6.5 millimeter, thereabouts. Anywho, let's go ahead and get these glued in. Pardon my reach. All right, a little bit of Loctite that I like to use. Oh, you know what? I saved that little bit of red flash, but I didn't use it. Oh, Jessica, why did you not remind me? All right, so we're, I can feel in here. Let's do some pointing real quick. Okay, we can feel here. There is the back of that cone head. Thereabouts is that front of that cone head. And there's my beginning of my thread head. And what I want to do is just add a little dab of glue. Yeah. A little dab on that side, and we'll stick on our eye. One more time, I said uh, we'll stick on our eye. We'll do -si do and mirror that on this side. Make 
sure we're even. We don't want our eyes to be off. We want them to be on. Dun, dun, dun. I like it. Alrighty. We got our eyes on it. Alright, before I add my res to seal that up, I should have did this before I did the eyes. Backtracking. Alright, I have some poppy red. This is a pro marker. It's alcohol base. And I'm just going to come underneath here and get a little bit of the red madness going on underneath. A little red. Just a little red throat. I should have done, should have done that before I did the eyes. Do that before you do the eyes. Alright. Let's go ahead and find... Uh, this time I'm going to come in with... You're going to... I don't know, a regular bone dry might be a little bit too thin, but we're going to come in with some solar res thin right here right now. And it's going to be a case of a little dab of glue. I need to add a little bit more light. Might get a little too bright, but I need to see what we're tying here. All right, one little drop between the eyes. Kind of let gravity do its thing, settle that in just a little bit. And then we're gonna zap it. Right, same underneath. Got one little, one little bit. And I know it's gonna be troublesome if I don't nip it in the bud now, if they say. Again, we're gonna aim right between the eyes underneath one little, one little droplet we'll let the gravity spread that evenly and now we'll zap that in place so the bulk of that's filled in in between the eyes kind of on that front half towards the front all right um, now I'm gonna add a little bit of the solar as bone dry to encapsulate everything up front and we got quite a bit to go on so we're just going to go right on with the brush applicator but we're going to take our time and we're going to keep this spinning so we don't get too much coagulation All right right on those eyes and that's going to really make those pop right over those eyes help the pop help seal it in That's nice. Nice, nice, nice. All right, now we'll set it. Well, I don't know if the camera picked that up or not, but there was a little puff of, little puff of vapor coming off there. Ten seconds. That's what it says. So we'll give it a to do. I think one of the biggest problems. A lot of people encounter using um, ultraviolet products, ultraviolet curing products, is they just simply don't give it enough time. So, till to the next episode, my friends. Shazam. All right. Like I said, I was going to play with my markers before I went too far. Here is our marsh green aka our dark olive marker and we're going to add some stripes right on top we're going to add some that way and we're just kind of breaking up that pattern or creating a little bit of a pattern you can use a black you can use a brown you can 
Well, like I always say, ladies and gentlemen, imagination is your only limitation. And I like to do this on that top half, just to kind of get us some variegation, just some lines. There you have it. All you got to do is add water, and that sucker will be swimming. Absolutely fantastic. So that is kind of my take, my variation on a, a dirty hippie. What do you think? Let's let's take it to the comments. So I'll open it up to uh, line one. Any uh, what do we think on line one? Andreas, good morning. Good morning. Let's see here. We need to add video capture device. Andreas, good morning. How are you? Um, good. Good morning, Germany. Um, We'll just pretend we have a uh, computer from the, uh, I don't know, whatever. Let's see here. There we go. There we go. I got a little camera overlay. Now I can see what's going on and I can see the chat. Hey, what's going on? So here we are, Wednesday, April 15th. We've got 10 people tuned in. It's good to see everybody. Um, here's my headset. Um, how we doing? Let's check in. Let's do a buddy check. Um, I'm doing fine. I've been stressing a lot, but you know, we get get through each day one day at a time. And that's about all we can ever ask for. So um yeah. The old stimulus check came in. Um you know, good thing I uh have always been pretty happy or not been pretty happy, but uh pretty good and quick with getting my tax returns in and things like that there so yeah we'll give it a few seconds so uh, we're, we're gonna definitely tie another one uh, we're gonna get back to this we're gonna take a quick pause for the cause here for just a brief few moments looks like we still got some sunlight going on outside we did have uh, some intermittent snow showers it just uh, it just will not let go um, what can you substitute for a cone head? You could substitute with a bead head, uh, a glass bead, a plastic bead, or if you want, um, I guess another substitute could be simply with a, uh, a bulk, a bump of thread, a big bump of thread, or actually a couple extra wraps of lead. Um, you know, maybe we'll do that. Well, maybe we'll do that. We'll try that. On our next fly, uh, so uh, Steve, Steve had snow. You're out east coaster, right, Steve? I believe so. Um, so yeah, hey Ken, how you doing? Ohio. So I'm gonna take a quick pause for the cause. I'm gonna grab a, a refresh on my beverage. My Canada Dry has runneth dry. So uh, stay tuned, folks. We're going to just take a quick pause for the cause. And when we come back, we're going to go ahead and uh, continue on with tying another variation of the same fly. All right. Uh, stand by, everybody. Stand by.
we are back thanks for sticking around thanks for sticking with me I uh, appreciate 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 you all right so let's go ahead and um, yeah let's do another one let's go ahead and pop that over looking good okay so we're gonna try another variation uh, Rika Gaines asked, what can you substitute for a cone head? And guess what? We're going to just straight up tie it with no cone head. I guess you could call that a, a snow cone head. <laughs> oh, wow. That was not even close to being funny, was it? Yeah, I know. I crack myself up. What can I say? All right. Let's go ahead and... I like that one. The Dirty Hippie. All right. Look at all this beautiful run this. This could be some good dubbing. Nice little dubbing blend. Get some of those. Put some different chunks in there. I don't know. Maybe towards the end we'll do something with our scraps. All right. Let's right to our hook then all right so once again hook I am using a uh, moonlit ml057 it's a uh, what's key here is it's for me it's a 3x long shank hook um, All right, so yeah, let's just go right to it. The question before was, what can you do if you don't have a, if you don't, if you need a, if you don't have an extra cone head? We're gonna just tie it without that cone head. So we're gonna start our thread at that where it would be, and that's where we don't want to take our, our lead lead free wire past that front point yeah, you know really ultimately you know it's the the purpose of that cone head is just to help kind of keep everything proud and splayed out um, this is what we're gonna do Snow wraps got 200 lead free wire you know, obviously you go with a lead wire, it's going to be a little denser, a little heavier. There we go. Right there, lined up with the tip of the hook. And further back. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take counter wraps. I don't know, every two, three, four wraps. I'm just going to stop and compress that down. This forward, we're doing nice, we're doing good. A couple more, and now we're right to that thread. And we're gonna stop, we're gonna 
go back. I'll go back a couple of wraps right about there, maybe. And I'm going to pinch with my fingers, and that'll help push that forward. Boy, I don't know. That looks pretty darn spectacular, and I'm not going to try to helicopter that, because I think that's just going to be a little chunky if I try to do that. I'm going to come with my wire cutters and give it a nice clean cut. So there you have it. That is without the cone head. All right, I'll carefully wrap forward a little bit. We'll get our thread up and in there. A little bump in front. Almost have to take cross wraps. Right back here, and we'll build our little ramp at the back end, and we'll wrap our thread forward. And let's even add a little dab, a little dab of secret sauce right there on the inside pocket. Oh, just get that right in there. That's going to work in that thread, in that wire. That's what we want. So there we have it. We got a little bit of a denseness right there, ready to just be magical. All right, same as before. We're going to go with our Flashaboo. I got this uh, red holographic Flashaboo. And what a lot of people don't know... 402 North Main Street, Stillwater, Minnesota. Didn't have to go far for this, all the way from Stillwater. Let's just go ahead and take ourselves a few strands. Use my whip finish hook. I don't know, five, six, seven strands or so. I had one that got away. Tried to. Not today. Let's go ahead and line up our... doing this I just like a I always like adding a little bit of red into my flies I don't know, we'll see what happens when we get up towards that, that mass up front this flash of blue might not like working and playing well with that because I didn't do much of a I felt that we got a backtrack I lost tension and the whole thing just went boing. Alright, let's try that again. I can feel it sliding through the fingers, always keeping tension on that. 
I suppose if we do mess a little bit, we're not going to lose any sleep over that. At least I'm not going to. How about you? So has everybody tied their uh, safety bug challenge fly? I found another safety pen. You know what? I don't think that's just going to... I suppose I might be able to get a little bit up and over. Well, let's just take one wrap. Just to keep it all legit. Let's trim off our excess. Actually, you know what? Yeah, we'll trim it off for now. Oh, bye. Whew, that's intense. That's, uh, that's a little tough on the old shoulders. But, you know, if we do it for you, we do it for the people. All right, let's find our... Where did I put it? Bone dry. We're going to goop on some bone dry. pretty sparse with it but guess what not today oh nuts sorry about that we just about had a major catastrophe knocking over the entire bottle of solar res bone dry oh my goodness that would have been terrible that would have been a mess give it a zap so the safety bug challenge was started by uh, one Mr. Bear Owens. I believe if I speak correctly, he's from the Charlotte or Charlotte. Yeah, Charlotte. almost said Charlotte. Uh, Charlotte, North Carolina Project Healing Waters program. And he came up with this idea to challenge everybody to stay home and tie a fly commit yourself to stay home stay safe uh, go ahead and look it up it's the hashtag safety bug challenge I have a blank safety pin uh, to tie another one on but a couple weeks back I tied a uh, woolly bugger so look up the hashtag safety bug challenge um, it's pretty cool it, it is gone worldwide which is pretty cool International. It is spread just like the virus itself. All right. Same as before. We're gonna take our got some tan H2O flash, which is the same as a uh, flashaboo type material. And we're gonna grab I don't know four, five, six strands or so of this. snafu I'm gonna try that again because all I ended up getting was out the full full length you know what we're gonna leave it at that we're gonna cut that in half in the lamp but if you guys could only see the madness I got going on over here We got our tan. Set that down. We're gonna grab our pearl flashaboo. We're gonna add that into the mix. And I have a little bit of a green green and gold mix. We're going to add a little bit of that in there as well. There we go. We'll take a bunch of a batch of all our different colors. 
We got tan, we got gold, we got, got the fruit flavor shine, orange, cherry, lemon, and lime. All right, let's lift and lower. Actually, before I go too far, I need to wrap, I wrap my thread a few times. Okay. Lift and lower, and we're gonna kinda pop this up at an angle. We're gonna wrap our thread forward a little bit. And wrap our thread back a little bit. And we can take our flash boom mix and we're gonna kinda aim it up and to the right, or up and to the far away. So now everything is more or less on the top half on top 180 degrees, if you will. All right, so here we go. Uh, stick our clip on there just to keep it out of the way when we do our marabou, a little bit of olive marabou. You betcha, Steve. Uh, yeah, definitely check out the safety bug challenge it's pretty cool it's pretty neat to see how far and how fast it spread all right let's find our marabou this I think this one will do I'm being picky with my marabou what I'm looking for is something with a lot of something with some good size to it that doesn't have too thick of a quill. So right about there. You know when the quill starts to get a little thicker. I'm gonna brush this. Just take a quick second, and I'm going to brush this out on the table just to get these barbs to work a little bit better. There we go. All right, top side up until I till I'll dry it is. Tie that in just a little bit like so. And then let's trim off that excess stem. Bye bye. All right, let's synchronize our watches. Because if you ask me, it's marabou time. Oh, it's just like a hackle time, but slightly different. Uh oh. I'm hearing some clickety click clicks. Are we doing all right? How's the audio? It is hard to find good marabou. But we're going to do this just like it's a soft tackle. We're going to go one, two, three, four turns or so. We're keeping everything directly in front of the, uh, what do you call that? A little blob of, it's not a cone anymore. It is. Oh, bother. I knew that was going to happen. Let's try it again. Okay, audio is still good. I heard a little crickle clackle. That's a technical technical term. What happened to my marabou? There you are. It's all going to get brushed up and towards the back, so I'm not going to lose too much sleep on that. Alright, let's 
pulled everything up and up and towards the back. That's gonna be our top wing. wrap right on top of that back to what was our cone head which is now our lead head which is actually lead free I'm gonna give this just a little dab of secret sauce a little insurance policy under there So what we're going to do is we're going to just come in with our pro marker since we have just this wing and that's all we want to get with our marker anyways. That'll fluff out and the voodoo will be fine. All right, where are we at? We got to do our belly. Let's get our belly here. And this was once, from what I understand, this is once a pillow. A coyote pillow. We're going to go all the way, all the way around to the belly. Just because I, I like the, the lighter, whiter hue of our hair. And we do still get some length out of it. So let's go ahead and chop ourselves a chunk of coyote belly. That's what I'm using here. Let's go ahead and try that again. We failed on that one. Cut at a bad angle. What can you do? All right, there's our belly here. A little bit lighter, a little bit wider. Pull it by the tips, and we're going to clean that out quite a bit. You'd be surprised how much junk is just hanging out in there. Look at all that good dubbing. Oh, boy. Just flies right off. All right, so again, puppy's almost at full length. Let's go right underneath. Couple of soft wraps, position, snug it all in. Yeah, I like that. Let's go ahead and trim off our little nub. Okay, we're doing good. We haven't crowded that eye yet. Let's come in with our collar. Collar is going to be a little bit darker. So let's go ahead and take off our little chunk of that. Alright, 
same as before. Even though we're not going to be using much of this bottom end, we're just going to clean that up just to get it out of our way for our tying purposes. It's like brushing a dog. Clean and keep clean and keep cleaning. All right, check this out. We're gonna go about halfway. We're gonna spread that all the way around, 360 degrees around that whole hook. Take a couple of soft wraps. Gonna reposition ourselves ooh that's nice trim that all off all off not Olaf speaking of Olaf I've been experimenting Shh, don't tell anybody but another hobby of mine I've picked up the old uh, wood lathe Dusted that off and been having some fun just kind of experimenting around. And so far, all I can make is a snowman. I don't know much about it, I'm not that good at it. Just like most of the beginners, and they're beginning of tying flies. Oh, I suck at it. Blah, 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 blah. Well. How much time do you have invested into it? Well, get some hours on it and it'll be all right, all right. There we go. All right, where are we at? We are looking for our... Uh-oh, hit the camera. Perfect. A little angel hair. And for this, I got some copper. I have a copper shoe. So the first thing we're gonna do is just kind of start straightening. So we gotta cut it down a little bit. And these fibers are just way too long. So any kind of UV ice dub or whatever kind of blend you can find. I don't like going too bananas with it. This is really supposed to be an accent on anything. And I just build up a little bit of a bump there. I've got just a little micro ledge, and I want to. Even that out, I guess. I think that's going to be us. Brush that out here in just a second. For now, we whip. And we whip. Very good. I know it doesn't look like too much yet. But let's wait till we get our brush on it. Start brushing this back. I feel like I got one little knot in there. Yeah, a little bit of a rat's nest. Let's clean that out. I want that to be nice and smooth. Ooh, that's nice. Once we get our uh, glue on there and our eyes on there, let's go ahead and trim off our tail real quick. Or not our tail, but our Omero boot or flashy boot at the back end. So I'm just going to rack my scissors back and forth as I close. And it gives us a jagged... Jagged cut. Alright, 
before we forgot to do this before we did the eyes and we're gonna remember it this time I'll tell you that for free get underneath be good we already did our top half we're ready for eyes the eyes will have it all right where did we put our glue there we go we got it Our eyes. Make sure we got our eyes ready. This is more embarrassing than trying to glue something on that's not ready to be glued on. Little dab of glue, yeah. I like using the gel control. Sticks to everything, especially your thumb. Ah. All right. That looks like a hot mess, but we will prevail. Quarter inch. Uh, Sticky back, hollow, graphic, pearl eyes, whatever you want to call it. The fingerprint should disappear once we get it with the uh, UV resin. we doing for time what do we got for time let's see it's almost 7 30. we're doing good for time happen to have a lot of it right now that's all right let's add a little dab right between the eyes whoa that's pretty quick I'll let gravity do its thing i don't think we even really need to hit it with the bodkin yet yeah, I like that. Right between the eyes. It just settled right in, filled in that gap. And that's what we're looking for. Same underneath. We're just gonna well, we're gonna just get that nice and level level is good right oh, take the cap off you knucklehead fill that gap I'll let gravity do its thing and set How are we looking? I think we're going to add another little drop more. All right. Let's get our cap back on. Bodkin's in my hand, and you know what? That's looking like it's pretty good. All right, back into the upright position. We will find our bone dry and a little bit. What 
we got Patrick Cannon. Hello from Project Healing Waters, Indy. Awesome. What's up, Indy? Greetings from St. Cloud, Minnesota. Just wrapping up the, uh, what is this? Dirty hippie variation. I just about forgot what we tied. That's how good I was at it. We have a bone dry. Seal this all in. See that thumbprint? You know where that is? He's gone. He's gone. Zap it. Zap it, zap it, zap it. Well, I'm not confident we're going to be able to tie another dirty hippie in uh, the allotted time. So I'm going to propose for our remainder. I don't know. I think I'm going to do a little freestyle. See what happens. See what we come up with. Questions, comments, concerns? How are we doing out there? A little aerodynamic pump on that, but we're gonna Sometimes that's about the only way to smooth out a little dab of resin. So yeah, that's a, that's a variation of a uh, dirty hippie. All right, so what do you think? Let's open it up. Questions, comments, concerns. How we doing out there? Let's check in. I love checking in with everybody because I love to see what you guys got going on in the chat. So uh, we're going to leave this at that for just a few moments. Check in. Check in on the chat. I want to thank everybody for subscribing to my channel. Where did it look like? Uh pulled up earlier 900 up, 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 up. how many subscribers are we at it's taken a second to load we're at 902 subscribers so that's 98 away from 1000 tell your friends uh, tell your family hit that subscribe button hit that like that thumbs up it's too easy to subscribe it's super easy because all you have to do is click a little box that says subscribe and it doesn't cost you anything what that does is if next time you get on YouTube uh, you click on the button that says subscriptions and that shows you everything you subscribe to and wouldn't you know that uh, a lot of my subscriptions or yeah that I subscribe to are fly tying and fly fishing related so yeah well let's go ahead and see what we come up with for our little freestyle uh, whatever we want to come up with um, yeah we'll try something let's try it let's go to here dump that screen what should we tie next week um i'm not sure i am thinking i'm thinking next week even though i know we don't have bits and parts to the participants 
but I'm thinking I haven't tied these in a while. Some Tom Sue's hoppers. What do you think of that? We could tie some of these up next week. I'm open for suggestions. Uh, you know, if you want to see something, throw it in the comments uh, when this video hits uh, after the live stream. Because then I can go back. I, I unfortunately, because I'm not at that thousand subscriber level, I can't go back and read all of these comments. So once these comments, once this video broadcast is done, it's gone. All right, let's set this guy off to the side. I got one, two, three, four, five. I ended up with five of those. Um, I'm going to switch hooks. I'm going to bump it down to a little size eight. This might just end up being like a carp fly or something. I don't know. I don't know. Um, let's see about zooming in a little bit. Let's see here. We need to... Let's give that a try. different tabs all these different windows all right we're looking a little bit better we're getting a little bit closer let's bump in just a little bit more there we go that wasn't so bad now was it I have, I have all these different configurations and settings and I don't know. Uh, do I make the parts for those? Yes, I do. I do. Um, might, might be able to punch a few out. I do have to make a run out. Um, I might be able to run run a little kit out to you, Josh. Run run a little package out to you and uh, and Frank. Um, it's all kind of put together. It's the Tom Sue's Hopper, T O M S U S Hopper. You know what? Maybe we'll stick to something different. Um, I don't know. All right, let me go ahead and just stick with this one. I just got something pretty fun and simple for this that I want to do. I have a pretty simple idea. Uh, I got some brown hen hackle, coachman brown. Be a little big. It's all about keeping everything proportionate. Yeah, or we won't even bother with it. We're gonna go straight to our loop. I'm gonna do a dubbing loop here, folks. And it's gonna. Oh yeah, the Matuka. Yeah, we're gonna do a Matuka. I like that. Have you guys tied a Matuka recently? Um, my veterans at uh, St. Cloud. Have you guys tied a Matuka? I don't know. We're going to do a dubbing loop on this. We're going to add some wax. We're going to do it in 3D. Whoa, look out. Whoa, look out. 
Yeah, Frank. Good call. Good call on the Matuka. That's something y'all can tie. Bow show. All right, we'll get our thread forward. And remember this little clump from earlier? Let me spin this in. It's going to be interesting. I tell you that for free. We're going to end up trimming, but... This is going to be ridiculous. Right, let's grab our whip finish. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure at one point, Claude, Claude taught a Matuka. But it might have been a while. I don't know. It all, all kinds of starts. To, I felt that break. No. Let's try that again. All right, we're gonna try that again. Well, maybe if I double it up. Wax. Let's get our wax. Take extra sticky. And we've got one more opportunity to try this. I'll get this right there in between and in the loop, spread that out again. Take your time. Here. Now let's try spinning that again. Okay, we'll set that on there. That gives me a nice little of contact yeah that's spinning out a lot better hmm I'm kind of losing it here We'll see. We'll just see. Because I'm not being too particular. We're just using some leftover scrap material. I'm probably going to end up trimming. This is like a... This is almost coming off like a, a funky jute. You know, for like macrame. Definitely uh, something different. Kind of like mange. Come on, pick that out. Oh, yeah, that's nice. So yeah, when you're done tying all your uh, dirty hippies, you can tie a, I don't know what you call this, a dirty hippie flea bug? I don't know. I think that's just going to be it right there. I'll do one last round. Yep, I think that's all she wrote.
I'll tell you what. You dabble this right on the surface of the water, and I think you're gonna get something. I like it. It almost looks like a witch's broom. There is my quick finish. Alright. Let's get that for another second. And let's add a drop of bone dry on the Oh yeah, Josh has done a wonderful job on his whip finish tool. He's done one already. That was pretty cool. to go two bananas with the head cement on this one. Because we're going for nice solid seal. Oh boy. Where's the... There's the light. So there we have it. Um, golden demon. And that flies my way. Here we go. The golden demon. I'll have to look that up. So. I am just going to go and trim this back just a little bit. I don't know, it's just messing around with some extra material. I'm gonna fish that, we're gonna see what happens. Oh, bucktail and fox. Oh, uh, oh, it's a bucktail fox, oh boy. Yeah, five now, <laughs> Wow. All right, we're gonna do our, we're gonna do a Matuka variation, and I think I have a Matuka that I tied away a while back. Here is a variation of a Matuka that I tied away a while back. So we're gonna be tying something similar, I suppose. Look at that there. Or something. But anyways, yeah, it's body with some wire, and we have a couple of feathers back to back, woven in. It's gonna bother me. That's a little red-headed matuka. We'll cover that next week. This week was our... What 
30 hippie variations. Got one little bump up top, but I'm not gonna lose any sleep on that. Let's go with this one. There we go. I'll have to zoom back out. I think we're gonna wrap it up here. Let's go ahead and let's switch this over. So I'd like to thank everybody for tuning in. I know I had a lot of fun. Made it to almost eight o'clock. I'm a little tired. It's been a long day. Uh, the sun is starting to set. So join us. Uh, Join us next week while we do a, uh, a Matuka. I'll have to remember that. But yeah. Any questions, comments, concerns? We'll give it a few minutes, kind of let this spintro outro. Like it says, thanks for watching, everybody. Stay safe. Stay healthy. We'll do this again next week. Um, questions about Project Healing Waters? Head over to projecthealingwaters.org or just shoot me a message. I'd be more than happy to answer any questions I, I have or can. You know, I was thinking... Maybe we should try to do a contest or a giveaway. You know, we're going to think about that over the next week. Um, I have Project Healing Waters hat. Brand new. Tag still on it. This is the olive. That's the same hat as I'm wearing. You can have the same hat as me. So, maybe we'll uh, figure out how to do a giveaway of some sort. So I, I don't know. It's, it's hard to get out to the post office, but we can jam this into a box and mail it out. So, all right. On that happy note, thanks for tuning in, everybody. Stay healthy, stay safe, happy time, tight lines. Peace out, folks.